In this video, I want to talk about the core architectural elements of an AT robot. In particular, I want to talk about how AT robots understand the concept of compass direction, like how they relate to degrees in the human concept. Uh, and I want to talk about, <coughs> excuse me, uh, its register makeup and uh, a little bit specifically about how its flags register works. So uh, let's get started. So uh, AT robots, while they uh, move around in circles in a two-dimensional arena, uh, we may think of them as, uh, as a robot that goes in circles as, as turning 360 degrees eventually. AT robots' circles uh, are not 360 degrees around. They're 256 degree circles. Uh, my only guess here is that the original uh, author, Ed T. Toten III, uh, thought it would be extra cool if uh, the uh, number of degrees was a power of two. At least I've always thought it was cool that they were a power of two. <coughs> In the end though, it does cause some hassle because uh, sometimes you want to do certain types of calculations uh, based on how you do them with 360 degree circles. Uh, really they're just as easy. The only thing you have to remember is on occasion you're going to need to convert your concepts either mentally or in code to a 360 degree type calculation, do the work, and then convert it back to 256. For most things, we just need to understand um, you know, that 256 uh, is a power of 2 and it can be broken down by uh, you know, 64 degrees times 4, so that means a 90 degree angle that you think of uh, in the human world is a 64 degree angle in the AT robot world. 45 degrees human equals 32 degree increments uh, in the AT robot world. Instead of 180 degrees, a half circle, uh, in the human world we have a 128 degree half circle uh, in the AT robot world. I mean, if you just remember those main things, for the most part, you're going to be fine. Uh, only for ballistic type calculations where you're trying to sort of throw the ball where the other robot's going to be in the future rather than where he is right now. Only if you're doing that kind of stuff are you going to need to do any real code oriented conversions to 360 degrees and, and back. Uh, so that's the basics of the AT robot. Uh, compass directions. Now, <coughs> the AT robot computers, the, the computers that run the AT robot tanks, are all 16 bit computers. So every register in them and every memory location is a 16 bit signed only uh, memory concept. So there's no way to do unsigned mathematics uh, or comparisons in uh, an AT robot. Uh, and so that means we can get numbers as low as negative 32,768 or as high as 32,767. Those are the, the biggest and lowest numbers. Two's complement representation. All of memory is word addressable and in fact uh, the AT robot system has a memory map such that uh, even the registers that are inside of the CPU have memory addresses. Uh, I can't speak much to the design decision there. Uh, that's just the way this particular system is designed. But like our ALU and control unit that was designed for the computer organization class, uh, that one had registers A, B, and C, and they were private registers within the CPU dedicated to the ALU's front and back end. Uh, now, because we were at that extreme low level, we had to write instructions that controlled them directly uh, and moved data back and forth between them. Uh, but when we're talking about programming a system at the CPU level and out at the instruction set architecture level, uh, we look for a different set of registers which are within the CPU, but they're separate from those associated with the ALU or the uh, control units mapping of the registers in the ALU. These registers are just memory that happens to be inside of the CPU. Some of them can be used for special purposes, but most of them are just other 16-bit memories. So whereas we're used to seeing A, B, and C from our ALU and control unit in the AT robot, we've got registers that are based on the old Intel, uh, the early Intel register sets. So they're called AX through FX. Uh, and so we've got six of those that can be used for any general purpose 
uh, concept you wish. They're just a place to hold numbers, to do arithmetic, to do binary logic, etc. Uh, however, some of them have special purposes. Um, the accumulator, the AX register, for example, can be used uh, to inform an operating system interrupt about what operating system function you'd like to run. So let's say the operating system, which is of course outside of the CPU uh, conceptually, <coughs> has some kind of a function that uh, utilizes the hardware of the robot to uh, determine what your XY coordinate is in the arena. Let's say that that's um, operating system function 15. I don't know if it is or not, but let's just say it is. What we could do is we could put a 15 in the AX register and then in another instruction uh, call the interrupt instruction. And when we call the interrupt instruction, it interrupts our code uh, and puts the operating system on and the operating system checks the AX register to find out uh, what function you're asking it to perform. So in this case it would find 15 and do whatever 15 is and when it's done it would return control back to our program and it would keep running where it left off. Uh, the BX register, also called the base register, is just a register for general use, at least in AT robots. The CX register is called a counter register. You can use it for whatever you want, but there is a special loop instruction uh, that uses the CX register as the sentinel variable of a loop that counts down toward zero. Uh, and that makes looping constructs uh, simpler to program with fewer instructions uh, and possibly even faster because it has to execute fewer instructions. The DX register is the data register. Uh, in AT robots, it's general purpose. That concept of the data register comes from the Intel world. Uh, and the last two, the EX and FX registers, um, they're called the extended and function registers in the old Intel world, but uh, in AT robot land, they're just two more 16-bit values you can use, or they're places where uh, operating system calls when you uh, use the interrupt uh, instruction to have the operating system run something for you, uh, those operating system calls can actually return back data to your program. So I mentioned before we might ask the operating system to tell us what our XY coordinates are, so we'll use the, the interrupt uh, for that, the location interrupt. Uh, I don't remember which function number that is, but uh, we'll look it up I'm sure in a future video. Uh, we could uh, call the operating system's location interrupt, and when it's done, uh, before it returns control back to us, it will put the X value into the EX register and our Y value into the FX register, so our, our two coordinate values. Uh, and then it returns control to us, and we can just look at the contents of those, vari uh, of those registers, EX and FX, to figure out uh, where we are uh, in the world. Uh, that's the basics of the general purpose registers. But there's two more registers of interest to us. Uh, the stack pointer is a register that points to uh, the top of the system-wide stack. Uh, so this is a pointer uh, that looks into memory to, to give us a stack type data structure. That's one that is a last in, first out, as opposed to a queue which is first in, first out. So a stack, like a stack of books, is, is empty, and then you, you put something on it, you push something else on it, and you push something else on it, and you push something else on it, and then when you want to start removing stuff, you have to remove stuff from the top of the stack first. So the most recent things you put in come off, and we do that with a pop operation. You put stuff on by pushing it to the stack, you take stuff off by popping it from the stack. And the stack pointer just keeps track of where in memory uh, the top of the stack is. And uh, in a future video, I will walk you through a robot that is part of our AT Robots bundle called Stack that demonstrates how we can use the system stack and the stack pointer to make function calls that take uh, multiple arguments uh, in an interesting way. And it utilizes the stack uh, to do it. And it kind of gives us some insight into how compilers are able to write uh, or generate assembly code in the end. Uh, for the high-level uh, C or C++ or whatever language we're in, whatever kinds of functions we write. So we can see a little bit about how that works. But the stack pointer uh, register helps us do that. The final register here is the flags register. The flags register is just a location where we keep track of the individual results of certain ALU operations. 
So in our ALU and control unit uh, design, we had a sign flag, a carry flag, and, a, and an equals flag. Uh, that was what we chose by design. In the AT robots world, uh, there are different flags. Specifically, the flag register is another 16-bit entity. Most of the high bits from bit 4 up uh, are either reserved or open, but you might as well call them useless. Um, but it's the bottom four bits, the low ones from 0 to bit 0 through bits 3, that contain the results of, or contain copies of each of the flags calculated from the, the recent ALU operations. <coughs> At least those that actually affect the flag register. In our design, every piece of ALU operation would change the flags potentially. In AT robots, it's primarily the compare and test instructions that do. But let's look at what the flags are. There's a E flag for equals. It uh, has a one if the uh, recent comparison uh, between two values uh, found out that the values were equal. Uh, if uh, comparing two values says that the left value when compared to the right value is less than the right value, then the less than flag gets a one of it, otherwise a zero. Uh, the greater than flag indicates if the left argument is greater than the right argument in a comparison. And the zero flag is a little weirder. Uh, it says whether or not they, the arguments were equal, but also happened to be zero. Uh, or you could say whether both arguments are the value zero. And that's outlined in, in this slide here, uh, which is part of that AT robots bundle I've given you. So that's the top half of this. It outlines the conditions under which we get these flags. The instruction that we execute to make that happen is the comparison instruction. <coughs> Much like the ALU and control unit programming that we did, uh, AT robots assembly programming uses shorthand mnemonics to represent the instructions. So we wrote for example, INVA for, uh, as a shorthand for invert the A register. Uh, in AT robots, one of the ones we will use is CMP, which is short for compare. Compare the relationship between two values, a left and a right. So here we're comparing X to Y, and if X is equal to Y, the equal flag is set, otherwise it's cleared to a zero. Uh, if X is greater than Y, the greater than flag is set, otherwise it's a zero. If it's less than y, uh, the less than flag is set, etc. Now there's one other instruction outside of comparison, and that's the test instruction that manipulates the flags. The test instruction is a lot like using the AND operation as we have seen earlier in our class, uh, where you can take a bit pattern and then a bit mask which has ones in particular positions of interest, and when you AND those two patterns together, wherever the bit mask had a one, uh, we're going to copy the bits from the other value down into our result. And wherever the bit mask had zeros, we'll zero out whatever values used to be in the result. And that produces a new value. And when we do that in C or C++ and perform those bitwise operations, uh, until we say, you know, I don't know, Z equals whatever it is, we're not actually storing the results of those anywhere. Uh, but when we were looking at the AND operation of our ALU and control unit, doing the AND would automatically store the value in the C register uh, outside of our ALU. When we use the test instruction in AT robots, it performs an AND operation uh, and it will uh, set the zero flag accordingly. So the zero flag will be set, uh, you can see it down here, if x anded with y equals 0. And the only way that can happen is if uh, the bit mask, let's say that that's y, uh, if the bit mask in y identifies bits with 1s in uh, argument x, and those bits have no 1s at all in them, that's the only way that we can get a 0 out of x anded with y. It doesn't store the result, however, back in either x or y. It just captures uh, the sentiment or the, the result of that and uh, in terms of whether the result was zero or not. So if the zero flag is set after the test instruction, that meant none of the bits in question were ones. If it isn't a, a one, meaning the zero flag has a zero in it, 
that means at least one of the bits uh, that the bit mask identified with ones, at least one of them in the other number had ones in them. Uh, so if you're wanting to do an AND bit mask to test for things, uh, it's a little easier and faster to use the test instruction because you won't end up clobbering one of your registers when you're done. Uh, only the flags get set as a result of this operation. Uh, the equal flag is changed, but it's only changed uh, in a way that is identical to the comparison instruction, so it just stores whether or not the two values x and y are identical, um, uh, which again is kind of related to whether there were any... Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, that just whether they were identical. Uh, and then the uh, greater than flag is set uh, greater than and less than flags are, I'm sorry, not set, they are just left alone uh, to be, or they become zeros after the test instruction. They're not left alone, they become zeros. Uh, and that's the main thing to know about those instructions. So um, remember we have uh, just a handful of flags, the equal, greater than, less than, and zero flag, and most of the time we think about them, it's in terms of the comparison instruction. Really we only use the test when we want to do uh, find the result of a, a binary bitwise and without storing the results, just storing uh, the valued information about whether uh, the result of that was a zero or not. Uh, and as far as our general purpose registers, those are reg six registers, AX through FX, uh, and then the stack pointer points to the, stop of the top of the stack for us to use when we push and pop information later on.